Welcome to a short stop on straight pool. How about some one pocket today? This is a stream by Omega Billiards TV. I'm going to put my mug down here because I want you to be able to see the sponsors on the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen. I'm, I'm, I'm in the business of promoting pool. I don't want to detract from anyone. So I encourage you to visit those guys and patronize them. I'm not going to show the entire game. It's too long, and I, w I don't want this to be too long of a video. In this match, we're going to see Tony Johan start off pretty strong and then kind of give it away his advantage. This is not Tony's best break shot. As you can see, how do we identify that it's not Tony's best break shot, by the way? This right here. Corner ball leaked out. Federer already has a ball near his pocket that he can protect and cause trouble for Tony if he can find a way. What uh, Federer does is try to do uh, bank these balls and just put the cue ball on the wrong side of the stack. Let's watch him shoot. See, he drew the cue ball, and the danger with that is the eight ball is coming back into the stack, so the eight ball is going to disturb those balls. So he lost his market on, on, on playing the wrong side of the stack safety. This is the first shot that I really kind of question with Tony because he's what, he's what he wants to do is park the cue ball right here. Nothing wrong with that. So he's playing, he's going to play the cue ball into the 15. Now, if you hit it well, it behaves like a cut shot, and the 15 will probably go here, maybe hit the 12, knock balls to your hole, and, but you've got to hit it at such an angle that this 10 ball goes up table. So you're still leaving a ball on Federer's side, even though you're, you're uh, moving a ball to your side. The most important thing is the cue ball. Park the cue ball here. But he kind of makes the same mistake that Federer did on his shot. But the 10 ball comes across the 15 instead of into the side of it. Oh, it comes below it and hits the cue ball. So what do you do when you're in Federer's position? You're looking at what is to your advantage and what is to your disadvantage. The first thing he's, he's looking at is this. He doesn't have any balls near his hole. So that's a disadvantage for Federer. In, if you look at the same area on the other side of the table, Tony has two balls. So that's definitely a, a disadvantage for Federer. This is an advantage for Federer. These balls are not lined up to his pocket, but they're lined up close. And so there could be a, a, a time in a few innings from now, within a few innings, where Federer has the opportunity to knock that 15 ball real close and play, play the cue ball in, in a real tough spot. This is a disadvantage. You definitely want to move those because those balls don't go. Federer is playing a return shot by, off of these balls. And all this is, it's not a move. It's not going to help him. It's going to get him out of the inning. I have a different idea. I want to address these balls. Federer wants to keep all these balls down table because he needs them down here, while, whereas Tony wants to send them up table. What are, the, what are the balls that are to Federer's disadvantage? It's these two. He needs those open. You shoot the combination bank. The 15, you want the 5 to just stick right there. You want the 15 to bank across table to maybe to here, maybe over to here. And then you're going to send the cue ball like this. Depending on how it lays, I don't know how thin, a, how thin he is on it, you could also send the cue ball to here. The only reason why that's a good shot, or potentially a good shot, is you're fixing a problem. If you leave these here, it only helps your opponent. Now, Federer's going offensive here. He's lined this up, and the 10 ball's going this way. He sees the 10 ball helping himself out, and he's going to try and stick the cue ball right there. So he was trying to park the cue ball behind the sick. The problem with it is, if you don't get the cue ball perfect, which he didn't, then it becomes a horrible shot. Tony, again, has an excellent advantage. He's not playing position here. Just make the ball. Pretty easy bank shot. And finally, he has his first opportunity to move balls up table. There's been a few moves, and Federer played a couple of really good shots and has left Tony really difficult. Now, if the balls were in a different position, I know you'd see uh, Tony cut this 14 ball, but that's a sellout shot in this instance because Federer has these balls close to his hole. Tony still has the advantage. It's 6 to minus 1. What would you do here? Tony's uh, response is pretty aggressive, and had it worked out well, we would have been applauding. He's just kicking behind these balls. Now, had he hit the, a little bit more of the 15, 
I think the 15 would be over here, and the 12 would be over here. And then the cue ball might have stopped approximately where it is. So a tough shot. I'm not sure what he had, what shot he had that was better. But this is, you know, against a lot of players, that's not a, not a big sellout. But this is Fedor Gorst, and he just gets out his Ginsu knife. So Fedor ran a couple of balls, a few balls, got himself out, himself out of debt. He now has two, six to two. And once again, Tony's kind of in the same trouble spot. What I, what I was hoping Tony would shoot, because I've seen him shoot it before, is to cut the 14 ball in his pocket and send the cue ball one rail, two rails, three rails, short side position on the five. I mean, that's a heck of a shot. I don't think it's warranted in this position. He's ahead six to two. He's not thinking about that. He's thinking about uh, gaining the advantage. He's still at six to two. He's four balls ahead. He has three balls on his side in good position. Federer only has one ball that banks to his hole. He, Tony still has to feel like he's, he, if he can just get these balls up table, he's going to have the advantage. Now he's shooting the five ball, I believe. Yeah. You see how much he cut that five? That's on purpose. And I think he overcut it a little bit. What he's trying to, the five ball was about here. He's trying to send the five ball three rails to the vicinity of his side pocket. He wants it clear of any banks that he wants to make, but on his side, stick the cue ball here. So he just mishit it a little bit. Because he overcut it a little bit, the cue ball came up. But you have to look at the table now and think, Tony's going to win this game now. Tony's an aggressive player. He knows he can make this bank shot, but he has to cross this 14 ball in order to bank it. In my opinion, the risk of hitting that five is just too big. If you hit the five, you knock it on your side, you get a double kiss with the cue ball or something else that doesn't work out. I, I don't think it's warranted. Tony's ahead six to two. If he was, if he was behind in the score, maybe, maybe uh, it would be warranted, but there's got to be a better opportunity here. The other option for Tony is to simply uh, uh, tap the 12 to the rail and over here, kind of sandwich the cue ball right here between the 12 and the 5. Like I said before, when, you're, when you've got your opponent down, you want to kick him. You want to make him impotent. Don't give him any air at all. But it's, I think it's just the right move in this case because look what can happen. The... I mean, that didn't have to happen. You set it up again, Tony will make it the next time. But the risk was there, and the risk wasn't warranted because he was ahead so far in the score. This is the next turn of events that went uh, against Tony. Tony can take this ball out. Real first with some draw. It's happened to us all. He just double-kissed it and, and sold straight out. So he, it's now 6-3. to three. And it's about to be 6-4. And Fedor can get the cue ball over to this side rail. So he has a bank shot on the three ball. Just a couple innings later, and Tony shoots a shot that I, I, I really like. It's a very aggressive shot. And you think he's, behind, he's only ahead 6-5. It might not be warranted. But this shot actually lays pretty good. The cue ball goes above the side pocket. And the double kiss isn't there if you hit it well, which he did. When you make those shots, you look like a hero. When you get the double kiss, <laughs> I'm not going to say. Um, so this is only a couple of innings later. Federer has done well. He's got a ball down on the spot again. He's trying to get balls down table and get balls in play. Now, I just mentioned when Tony had a ball on the spot and the cue ball was here, oh, what a good shot it was for him to bank that one rail. So isn't it a good shot for him to bank this one as well? This one, you use left English. That's going to help to throw the 10 ball into your pocket. And then it helps to throw the cue ball wide above the side pocket. Uh, I agree with this shot. I think it's, I think it's the right shot. Again, the 10's not going to have a lot of speed. It's going to be hanging in front of your pocket, unless if you hit it that badly. Most opponents, this wouldn't be all that big of a sellout. I mean, Fedor has a uh, three-railer. One, two, three, to his pocket. Pretty aggressive shot, but it looks pretty... It kind of looks like it's on, and he could draw the cue ball back to here. But Fedor is a rotation player, and he's not thinking like that. Watch this shot.
And I mentioned that earlier. A lot, a lot of players today are getting really good at cutting these balls thin. Because you have to. That's the only shot you're going to get in one pocket often. What a shot. So now it's 7-6. to six. From this point, you've got to say it's anybody's game. And Federer knows what to do here. I think 20 years ago, you didn't see this shot very often. But nowadays, with the faster cloth, people are shooting this shot. It, it, it's just a one-rail bank, one bank into your pocket. Lots of English on the cue ball. Slows down the cue ball. Helps to throw the object ball. And you can control the speed. There's no way you can hit this 10 ball so hard that it's going to leave the area of, uh, of your pocket on your side of the table. It's, it's part of what makes one pocket so uh, difficult nowadays is that shots like these are possible. Try that on Stevens cloth. That 10 ball wouldn't make it past the side pockets. What I'm talking about is the two rail bank. I need to get better at drawing those lines. <laughs> the reason why it lays well is the cue ball is going to go right to this rail. You shoot this with left English on the cue ball. And so that's going to shorten up the 10. So you make sure you cut the 10 wide. The 10 might actually hit the rail even here. But it'll come off that rail short right down to your pocket. And then that running English uh, brings your cue ball back around to here. Uh, practice that shot. It's really important in one pocket, I think. It's also very easy to hit it badly. So like I said, you've got to practice it. Tony knows this shot real well. In this position, I think it's the right shot. Do you? He, he only needs one. The other ball's out of play. Federer's been catching up. Is that what he tried to do? I think he did try to do it and just really overcut it badly. So just a few innings later, both balls are, are still in play. What do you think of this shot? Now, Tony, Tony attempted that two-railer, but he didn't hit it very well. This is another aggressive shot. It's a cross bank on the 12 to his pocket. Now, once again, Tony's ahead 7-6. to six. Is, is this shot warranted when you're ahead? That, this strike ball up table here is pretty much out of play. The only way Federer's going to get a shot at it is if the cue ball stops on the rail over here. I, I just kind of like either thinning the 10 like this and just leaving the cue ball, or uh, probably bringing the cue ball all the way back up here because you don't want to sell it across bank. If he wants to go aggressive, he could still do the two rail bank on the 10, try and follow the cue ball back up table some distance. I mean, that's, that's a pretty risky shot at well, as well, but I think it lays nicely. The, the point is, why bring this ball into play when you're ahead? The, the result is that the ball, the cue ball doesn't come over, for, or comes, yeah, it doesn't get over far enough to be safe. But my goodness, he just about made it. And he needs one ball. Federer has to uh, pocket this ball and jump the cue ball off the table. Tony really came out smelling like a rose. He almost won the game on the shot, and he's about to be ahead 7-5 with two balls on the spot. A few innings later, now there's three balls lined up at the spot. Tony's still ahead 7-5. What's the shot here? I don't... Tony went for it. Tony goes for the bank and misses it. Now, I think he's a favorite to make the bank, even from here. But if you're ahead 7-5, why would you? In my opinion, Tony's had some bad luck, but he has played a couple shots that kind of let Federer back into the match. And this one, even if those others were questionable, this one's real questionable. I mean, if he made it, which he makes that shot a lot, perhaps he thought that he was hitting it hard enough that the uh, cue ball is going to come all the way over here and the four is going to bounce out to here. But and my goodness, how good did he hit that? And then this shot I don't understand either because we've all seen Tony shoot this ball. Cue ball, full into the 12, kick bank. And I think it lays real well for it. This is several innings later and there's some, been some good shots from both players. But I, this is Tony's last shot of the game. And you wouldn't expect that because this is a real standard shot that comes up. Tony goes for the three-railer into his pocket. So in other words, one, two, three. I don't think it lays right. You kind of want this ball inside of the first diamond so that you can catch this rail. From where he's at, I think he has to catch this upper rail. And then it's also hard to control the cue ball. You want the cue ball to come up this way or at least up table like this.
That's really an unexpected shot from, from Tony. I'm not sure why he sent the cue ball this way. Did he expect it to go much far, a lot farther? And then the object ball went wide, very wide off that rail. I just, I don't think it laid right. Well, that was just a few of the shots. I don't think Tony was on his best game. He had a couple of, of uh, shots that went against him and then maybe a couple of questionable decisions. Let me know what you think. Did Federer play great or did Tony give this game away? Uh, leave a comment and let me know what you think. Do go over to Omega Billions TV and uh, give them your support. They're doing some great work over there. Thanks for watching. See you next week on Run of the Week.